How's it going everyone? It's Leo here and today I have an awesome tutorial. Let's get into it. So ever since I really started getting into rock and metal production, one question has boggled my mind and I've struggled to find an answer and that's how to get a modern sounding kick drum without samples, triggers, or anything like that. And it's been kind of hard, so I've kind of had to learn by doing. So today I'm gonna to answer that question, how you can get a modern sounding kick without any sample replacement or triggers. For those of you who don't know, sample replacement is the practice of you play the drums, right? You're playing the drums, it's all mic'd up, and then someone, your the engineer will take a sample, a pre-recorded clip of a kick drum or a snare drum and they'll put it over top of your performance so you're, it sounds like you're playing whatever kit that is being sampled. And I'm not too big of a fan of this. It, I think that it just takes that character out of the performance. It takes that human element out. I just don't really like that. I feel like if you're going to sample, replace, you're going to use triggers. You might as well just use MIDI drums because what's the point of even having a drummer? But anyway, I'm going to show you how you can get a awesome sounding metal kick without any of that. First things first, it starts from the kick drum itself. I like to use the plastic side of the double pedal or the pedal beater so that way it, you get more of attack. And with that, I also use a double click pad. It's a Gibraltar double click pad, so it adds even more attack to it. I'm using a 22 inch bass drum, and I've got my microphone inside the port, probably about halfway down the drum. So I'm really capturing that, that attack. That, that's probably one of the most important things we're looking for. Now, my philosophy when it comes to kick drums is have that clickiness, which is basically standard nowadays, but also having that low end. I think a lot of modern production forgets about that low end and it goes for that attacky, high end, clicky sound. We can have that, but we need to have some low end to remind it of the kick drum. I watched a great interview on Drum Talk with Igor Cavalera from Sepultura and he talked about loving that clicky sound, but loving that bottom end that makes it sound like a kick drum and that's very important to balance those two. So I always think of that when I'm EQing a kick. And speaking of EQing, that's the first thing we're gonna do. So some of these plugins are not included in Logic and I'll leave links down below. But the first one we're using is Logic's built-in channel EQ. First, let me play you the actual song here. It's a song I'm reworking called Pent Up Aggression and this is what it sounds like. This is the part we're gonna be looking at. So it's do, da, do, 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 da. That's our kick drum pattern, basically through the song. It really drives the song forward. First, let's listen to the EQ I have in Logic. So what I did, and I'll throw this up on the screen as well, is I have a low pass filter at about 47 hertz. I have the low end at 60 hertz and boosted. I took out the mid to low. I have the middle channel at 106 hertz and boosted and the other mid I have scooped out at 245 hertz then the high mid to high I have at 2600 hertz and boosted the high end I have at 4650 hertz and boosted and then I have a high pass filter at 11,000 hertz and boost it again. So just that sounds like this. So it's sounding a little bit better already and this is what it sounds like without it, with no plugins at all. Very hard to hear, actually. See, it's very faint, but 
once everything is added to it, it's going to be enormous. All right, so step one, channel EQ and logic. Step two is another EQ I use. It's called Drum EQ from AIX DSP. Yeah. Yep, AIX DSP, the Drum EQ. This is a fantastic plugin. This is a little bit on the expensive side, but if you do have it or you want to get it, it's a very valuable tool. So I have it EQ'd where it basically looks like two hills. So on the low end, it's a little bit boosted and it kind of scoops out in the one, two, and third, three octave range and then it's coming back up into four, five, and six and coming back down into octave seven. With that and the e channel EQ and logic, we get this sound. It's pretty aggressive. And it's super clipping right now. So, that's sounding a lot more like a modern kick already. Next thing I want to do is, because it's clipping a lot, I want to add some compression. So I'm using the built-in compressor with Logic, and I have this preset I have. And again, it's going to be on the screen. I'm using the Vintage Opto Compressor with the threshold at 34.5 decibels, the ratio at 2, 4 to 1, the knee at 0.7, the attack at 5.5 milliseconds, and the release at 1,000 milliseconds. No makeup gain. I've actually dropped the output gain 5 decibels, and I've only mixed it 47% in so that I, I don't have it over compressed. We don't want it over compressed. And that sounds like this. It's not clipping as much. It's a lot clickier, and there's one thing we're missing, and that's what I talked about before, and that's the low end. Now, this is the SK-10 from Waves Factory. This is a completely free sub plugin. It's very simple, low pass, output, and mix, and I have this preset. So my low pass is about 118.1 hertz. My output is at 0.7 decibels, and my mix is about 8 to 9 percent. And that adds just a little bit extra low end, and it sounds like this. We have that low end, but we still have preserved that clickiness. And one last thing in our signal chain is a noise gate. It's not necessary, I like to use it to kind of clean up and tighten up the sound. So I have this preset saved with the built-in noise gate and logic. The threshold is at 16 decibels. The attack, hold, and release are all at zero milliseconds so that I still get that clickiness because I found when those were raised maybe five milliseconds, that clickiness kind of gets lost when you're trying to balance out how much attack is coming through and how much is getting drowned out, like the snare and the cymbals. And all together that sounds like this. That sounds really good. And don't worry if it's like kind of choppy sounding because don't forget this is just the kick by itself and once it's in the mix you're not going to hear that choppiness. And let's listen to the whole mix one more time. Sounds like a pretty awesome metal kick drum to me. With that being said, if you like this video, please like it, share it with your friends, implement it yourself. I don't care if you even use the same settings, it's not like I'm making tons of money or anything. I'm gonna leave the links to both those plugins from Waves and AIX DSP in the description below. If you'd like to see more of these tutorials, let me know. I'll probably do more anyways. I'll probably do snare drums, overheads, you know, basically the whole kit uh, over, over time. Uh, I'm not going to do them all back to back. I'll freaking burn myself out. That really wraps up today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like, go to HeroSoapCompany.com. Grab yourself 10% off using promo code LEO at checkout. 
you're not only helping me, you're helping a veteran out because a portion of your purchase goes towards Operation Finally Home, which helps homeless veterans find a home. It's a great cause. You're not only helping yourself by smelling great with some all-natural American-made soaps, but you're actually helping out a veteran along the way. Let freedom clean. You can also visit my Stream Elements store in the link below. Grab yourself some really awesome merchandise. That's probably the best way to help me out. You don't have to, but if you feel so compelled. <laughs> you can also check out my podcast, the Leave It With Leo podcast. New episodes every Monday where I talk about the local music scene and some records and just a little bit of, you know, boots on the ground experience from a local musician. And I'm going to try to get some more people on it later down the line. So if you like that, you can go to anchor.fm. It's available on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and a few others. So you can check it out there. That merch is also in the Stream Element store. This was kind of a longer video, but I think it's very helpful and very much worth it. Thanks again for watching. My name is Leo, and I'll see you in the next video.